Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're glad you're with us this morning uh, for, I think it's service 106 of Healing School at Abundant Grace Church. We're glad you're joining, joining us on live stream. Just want to remind you guys, we're going to continue to do this as long as we have to. So come out and make sure you visit us every Tuesday through Friday at 1030 a.m. for Healing School. So um, before we get started with uh, the word today, let's open up in prayer. Father God, I come to you as touching this Healing School meeting today, Father. I thank you that as your word goes forth, the people out there, over the internet, that it would touch hearts and minds and facilitate change, Father. It would eradicate fears, Father, and it would point people into a growing relationship with Jesus Christ, Father. And I thank you for the anointing that's on my life to deliver your word. I erase myself of my agenda and ask me for yours. Speak through me, Father, exactly the word you'd want in due season. And I thank you for it all in Jesus' name. And say amen out there. Amen. So, yes, I just want to kind of... Um, continue with the where we were going yesterday and we've been talking about the couple times I've been in healing school with about being redeemed from the curse of the law and yesterday specifically um, we left off and where I wanted to kind of go back to was looking at people that are out in the world unsaved unchurched and even people that are Christians have a hard time believing that we have a real enemy and based on what's going on in the world today, you really don't have to look far to realize something evil and something awful is going on. And there is a real enemy. And I wanted to look at that a little deeper today. And I want to look at that under or under the, um, the guise of two different stories contained within the Bible. And these specific stories will point us into, um, once we've recognized that there is a real enemy, and I think we left off with that yesterday, knowing that there's a real enemy trying to take us out, you know, trying to come against us, trying to steal, kill, and destroy, you know, specifically, um, specifically looking for people whom he may devour, and we talked about a little bit yesterday about overcoming that by spending time in the Word of God, by meditating on the Word day and night. And these couple of verses of Scripture and these two Bible stories in two different areas of the Word of God, I want to go through because they actually draw comparisons to each other. And I never really saw that until the last couple of days as I was praying about what to minister on in healing school. But let's go back for a second and talk about the unchurched, unsaved folks out there. Um, and really, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that whose minds the God, little g, of this age has blinded, who do not believe lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is in the image of God, should shine on them. So people out there, unsaved, unchurched, are blinded by the enemy to come to the light of Jesus Christ. He's keeping them away from the light by working in and through their fleshly nature. Unfortunately, you know, the church has gotten away from using a three-letter letter word called sin. It's almost like we're afraid to use it, and we should. You know, sin is sin. It's what well, we use terms like, oh, somebody has an issue. Well, yeah, they have an issue, and that issue is sin. It's that simple. And it's, it's, it's not to glorify sin. It's not to be afraid of sin. We want to bring sin forth in a loving manner to other folks to help them, you know, to comfort them in love. Hey, look, let's talk. You know, me and Jody, were, my wife, were watching a movie last night on Pure Flix. And it was kind of interesting. One of the characters in this movie was a very legalistic Christian who thought she was doing good and was running around with all these friends of her husband telling them that you're going to hell. You know, one of the guys at the time was dealing in, in the character in the movie was dealing with stem cell research and she was calling him a baby killer and a murderer and telling her he needs to repent and know God. And the reality was she was being the biggest hypocrite by approaching people who were dealing with things in their lives, with sin in their lives, by condemning them and judging them. So we can't have that kind of message for people in the world. We can't have that kind of message for fellow Christians, but we need to uh, minister to them in love. But we know that unchurched, unsaved people are blinded by the enemy from coming against the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And I said yesterday, unfortunately, many Christians are also not walking in the knowledge that the enemy is real. 
And we looked at Romans chapter 16, verse 17 and 18, and it says, Now I urge you, brethren, note those who cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid them. So if, if there's messages they're hearing out there, if there's other Christians chirping in their ear, oh, something watered down, not the 100% uh, unadulterated word of God. You know, if they're giving them the bridged version, you know, not the unabridged version. They're, they're putting their own personal spin, their own story on it. That's the watered down gospel that gets people into confusion that certain behaviors, certain lifestyles are just okay. And that it's tolerance of sin. And where tolerance of sin is, it leads to people not having the ability to walk in the blessings of God. And that's what we've been talking about, that Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law. All the bad things that are going on today in the world, he's redeemed us from. But when we open the door to walking in a way that we shouldn't be walking, we're opening the door and allowing him access into our lives. So that, that stops us from walking in the blessings. So, Unsaved, unchurched Christians can absolutely uh, be blinded, but Christians can be deceived. So that's what we wanted to look at today. And, and what we were talking about yesterday was Joshua 1.8, the book of the law shall not depart from our mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it, for then you will make your way prosperous and then you will have good success. And really what was on my heart uh, yesterday after healing service that we did and thinking and meditating on today's message was, well, I don't know where everybody's out there. You know, normally when we're doing a live, in-person, at Abundant Grace healing service, I know most of the people here, many, if not all, you know, certainly 95% of the people come to church here. So I personally know them, but I don't know where everybody's at out right now on the internet. So we're gonna take a little step back with, a little step back and kind of look at this. Maybe you're struggling. Maybe you're struggling with the current circumstances that we're dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Maybe you're in fear. Maybe you're in worry. Maybe you're dealing with other sickness or illness in your body that's been going on for a long time. Now, when you start to layer these things, you know, hey, I was dealing with this in my life, in my body, my mortal body, but now I'm dealing with fear and worry about COVID-19. The enemy is trying to come hard. And the harder he comes should make us realize that the closer the victory is. I know I alluded to this yesterday. In my heart of hearts, I know that what the enemy's trying to bring right now, as the church rises up and stands, it, stand against, stands against it, it's going to facilitate revival. And that revival is something the enemy is trying to stop from happening. But the harder the battle, the, the more the battle rages, the closer we are to our victory. We can't have a breakthrough in our lives without a barrier. And the enemy is trying to give and put up a barrier to our breakthroughs by working through sickness, illness, disease, and fear, and worry, and doubt. And that's why I want to take a little step back. I want to look at two, two like I said, two stories in the Bible that actually, I didn't even really realize this, parallel themselves in many ways, and has 100% to do with if you're out there today and you don't know God, you don't know Jesus Christ, you don't have a personal intimate relationship. One of the stories talks about that, and the other one says it has, the other story is to do with healing. But God's plan of redemption, and we're going to look at this as we get near the end today, God's plan of redemption made provision for both salvation, for eternal life in heaven, and for divine health and healing. And you'll see these, these two Bible stories pointing what we think is in a different direction, but really come to the same outcome. Amen? So if you have your Bibles, you're going to have to put one finger in one place and then flip to the other one. So... Turn over to Luke chapter 19, verse 1, and we're going to go to Mark chapter 5, verse 24. So this is the story of two people, 
Many are familiar with the woman with the issue of blood, and that's in Mark chapter 5, and maybe not so many as much familiar with in Luke chapter 19, verse 1, is a tax collector, and I'm going to say his name the way it's, I think it's properly pronounced, and then we're going to shorten it for the sake of me not spending half the healing school service trying to pronounce this guy's name correctly. So we have in, in Luke chapter 19, verse 1 through 10, a guy by the name of Zacchaeus. So we're going to call him Zach for the rest of the healing school, just so we can get through this. So I want to read um, Luke chapter 19. I'm going to start in verse 1. We're going to pick it up there. Then Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. Now behold, there was a man named Zach, who was a chief tax collector, and he was rich. Now, if we go over to Mark chapter 5 in verse 24, so Jesus went with him and a great, a great multitude followed him and thronged him. Now, in both these verses of scripture, as we get through them, we're going to see that Jesus was being followed by a great multitude of people. Now, when you, when you think about a multitude in biblical terms, you really don't have to look further than Jesus feeding the 4,000 and the 5,000, and both those verses of scripture talk about, and then plus the women and children. So Jesus was always followed by a bunch of people. All right, so now we have Zach coming to Jesus. There's a crowd there, and we have the woman with the issue of blood. And I, I, I wanted to look at his name for a second. His name, Zacchaeus, in the Hebrew means pure. Now, if you know anything about biblical times of Jesus' day, tax collectors, which is what um, Zach was, were despised. People did not like the tax collectors. So they were looked down on as evil, nasty people who were there to collect taxes. And when we look at the woman with the issue of blood, and as we get into this, we're going to see that she's coming after she heard about Jesus, she wants to come see Jesus. And both these stories are stories of hearing and seeing Jesus. So this woman who had the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, Zach, Zacchaeus was pure, yet he was an evil tax collector. And then this woman with the issue of blood in biblical days, because she had that issue, would have been considered unclean. So we've got a tax collector, somebody who most people would look down on and say, who are you to go see the master? And you've got a woman with the issue of blood, who are you, you're unclean, you should stay away. Both those situations really let me know in my heart of hearts that Jesus says, come to me as you are. Come to me just as you are. I don't care what the world says about you, I only care about your heart. So Zacchaeus, whose, word, whose name meant, meant pure, had a good heart. And we're going to see that as we go on. And the woman with the issue of blood said, nope, I am not determined or I am not labeled by the issue that I'm dealing with because God looks at it in a different way. So let's go on back in, in, in Luke. So verse, uh, he was a chief collect, tax collector and he was rich. And he sought to see Jesus he sought to see who Jesus was. Now, this woman with the issue of blood in Mark chapter 5, we know that, and I'm going to read her story in a couple of verses. So Jesus went to him and went with him, and a great multitude followed him and thronged him. This is right after Jesus. He's on his way with Jairus to go pray for his daughter, and that's why the crowds are following him. So there's a multitude, and this woman is along the way to Jairus's house. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. So we've got Zach who's rich and we've got the woman with the issue of blood who spent everything she had trying to be well. So when I looked at these verses of scripture, our money is not our source. It's not our source for anything. Money's important to operate, but the love of money is a problem. We need money, but we don't need money to have us. So this guy, Zach, was coming to Jesus, and, it wasn't, and his wealth wasn't making him uh, feel provided for. He was seeking something else. The wealth in and of itself wasn't enough. 
This woman with the issue of blood spent every dollar she had to try to get well, and that wasn't working. Money will never, ever solve the problem. And if it solves a problem, like maybe where you're often, um, you're having some issues with um, financial lack and you come into money, it will temporarily solve the problem. But no, if your heart isn't right, is your heart isn't turned towards God, it'll eventually wither away and dissipate and you'll find yourself back in the same situation. And I looked at both these people, Zach and the woman with the issue of blood and birth, both of them, money wasn't solving thing one, amen? The woman spent all she had for the doctors, no go. Zach spent, had a lot of money, but was still coming to see Jesus. Well, why? He must have been dealing with something in his heart that money could not fulfill. You know, it's not coincidence, and we were just talking here this morning, it's not coincidence that this COVID-19 attack is not only attacking people's physical bodies, it's attacking their financial well-being as well. And I believe in my heart of hearts that the enemy is trying to layer this attack to just cause so much disruption in all parts of your life, fear, worry, and doubt. Not only are people worried about the virus itself, they're worried about the financial consequences that the virus is going to bring. Now, is that really any different than these people we're talking about? The woman with the issue of blood had a real medical issue that money couldn't change. Zach had money. We know he must have been coming to Jesus because he needed to facilitate change in his life and his money wasn't doing it. You know, and that's exactly what the enemy's trying to bring today with this COVID-19 outbreak. And if you're in fear and worry and doubt as we go through these stories a little bit more and wrap this up today, you're gonna see what these folks did in order to overcome what they were going through. And it's exactly if you're a Christian and you're saved, what we need to continue to do today to stand against COVID-19 and anything you're dealing with in your physical body. And if you're out there today and you don't know Jesus and you don't have a personal intimate relationship with him, this is also a story about what we need to do to get closer to God. Amen? So the woman went to the doctors, spent her money, no go. Now both of them, and I'm going to go on with a Zach's story, and he sought to see Jesus, who, who Jesus was, but could not because of the crowd. And he was of short of stature, so he was a little guy. And the woman with the issue of blood, the, the word of God in Mark chapter 5 tells us, Uh, When she heard about Jesus, she came behind him and the crowd and touched his garment. But we know that the verse of scripture in verse 24 says, as Jesus was traveling with Jairus to pray for his daughter, they were surrounded by a multitude. So these people both had to deal with crowds. And as I was looking at these scriptures today, Those crowds, which we know as multitudes, could have been thousands and thousands of people huddled around Jesus. And as I was doing a word study on multitudes this morning, typically, as the Bible refers to crowds, in a circle around Jesus. So they were surrounding Jesus on all sides. And these both, Zach and the woman with the issue of blood, had to deal with the crowd. Well, what's the crowd? Well, the crowd's a representation of that barrier that's standing between you and getting closer to the master. Whatever that is in your life, if it is physical illness in your body, that's your crowd, it's in your way. You know, if it's a financial lack in your life, that's your crowd, it's in your way. It's stopping from getting you close to Jesus, to the master. You know, and and what what we need to do with what we're dealing with today out in the world is we've got to do all we can, no matter what, to get closer to the master. Amen? So your crowd is your situation. It's that barrier that's blocking you. You know, I I know I alluded to this a little bit yesterday. This, This fear and worry that the world is dealing with. The reality that COVID-19 is real, we're not denying the fact it's real, putting people into fear, actually, I also kind of thought of this as well. It's robbing people of time. Well, what do I mean by that? People are spending more time worrying, talking about it, magnifying it, rather than spending the time in the Word of God talking about this and magnifying this. 
So yes, COVID-19 was real, we're dealing with it. The financial side of what this brought, we're dealing with that too. And that's now become our crowd, our barrier, our, our block from getting closer to the master. And Zach was dealing with that, and the woman with the issue of blood was also dealing with that. But I like what Zach did, okay? We know that this woman of the issue of blood ran up to Jesus, fought her way through the crowd. She was gonna get to Jesus no matter what it took to touch the fringe of his garment. And we're gonna look at that in a second. But here's what Zach did. So Zach, who's short in stature, obviously not only could he probably not press through the crowd because he was small, he couldn't see over the crowd. And it, you know, it wasn't like a parade when I was, my kids were little, putting them on my shoulders. Nobody was looking to Zach to put him on his shoulders. Why? He was a tax collector. They didn't like him. Right, so here's what he did, though he was short in stature. So he ran ahead of the crowd, he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him. For he, meaning Jesus, was going to pass that way. So what did Zach do here? In this verse of scripture, he ran ahead of the crowd. He got out in front of his problem. And how do we do that today? How do we get out in front of our problem, our crowd, our circumstance? right here in the Word of God. We spend time in the Word. You know, every single thing everybody out there is dealing with, whether it's something that's going on in the world today, whether it's something else. You know, we're focusing a lot on what's going on in the world today, but there's still many of us that are dealing with stuff from 40 years ago. But the way we get out in front of that, the way we facilitating healing in our bodies, the way we facilitate financial prosperity is all found here in the Word. That's how we get out in front of it. So this guy, Zach, literally ran ahead, climbed a tree, and got up in it. The woman with the issue of blood did everything she could to fight through the crowd. The crowd, the noise. We got a lot of noise going on here in this world today. And all the noise is negative, right? You turn on the TV, the noise we hear, the crowd we hear is negative, negative, negative. And I'm, you know, I know I alluded to this yesterday, I'm somebody that likes to be informed, but even in the information, I'm picking up on what's going on here. Even when the news seems to be good, they dash it with bad, with negative. They turn a positive into the negative. Yeah, we've, we've turned this corner, but the worst is yet to come. I don't care about COVID-19. I don't care about the financial issues that are going on. According to the word of God, if you're a Christian, the best is yet to come, not the worst. This is just something that's gonna facilitate the revival and second coming of Jesus Christ. Zach climbed a tree so he could see the master. The woman with the issue of blood fought through the crowd so she could get to the master. And I'm looking at this going, well, okay, why a tree, Lord? Why is there a tree in this verse of scripture with Zach? Well, that tree was a sycamore, sycamore tree, which bore fruit. It was a fruit-bearing tree, and he's up in this fruit-bearing tree. And to me, that tree represents the Word of God. You spend time in the Word. He climbed the tree, spent time in the tree to see Jesus. And that time spent in that tree, he got to see Jesus face-to-face, -face, despite of the crowd, right? And the Word of God, when we do that, we see Jesus face-to-face. -face. doesn't matter what's going on in our life. We get to see that, and we bear spiritual fruit. So that tree is a representation of the word of God. We've got to climb up in that tree every day and hold on to Jesus so we can see him clearly. We've got to quiet the noise. We've got to put spiritual earmuffs on to block it all out, not allow us to get off in fear. You know, literally, I mean, you hear every press conference, whether it's CNN, you know, our president speaking, who's obviously trying to do the best he can. You can turn on Governor Cuomo here in New Jersey. You can turn on Governor Murphy. They're all talking the same stuff and it's doom and gloom. And I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to prepare people. But as a Christian, we're already prepared because we have the word of God. And the word of God says, uh-uh, nothing trumps this. No evil will come against my house. Amen? So Zach climbs a tree. The woman with the issue of blood fights through the crowd. Think about that. Think about the, think about what it took for them to go to that step, to climb a tree, to literally say, I need to see this guy. 
Now, personally, the word of God doesn't say this, but I think Zach came to see Jesus because he heard about Jesus. I don't think he was just coming because he saw a crowd and wanted to follow it because nobody else was so desperate to see him and climbed a tree. Okay, where the woman with the issue of blood, the scripture point blanks told us she heard and then she came to see. Well, how does faith come? Faith comes by hearing and hearing what? The walking word, the, the word of God. And Jesus was the walking, talking, physical, manifested word of God. So Zach had to get to see him. I think he heard and he saw. The woman with the issue of blood heard and she saw, right? We hear the word and then we can see it in the word. And then once we see it, we can believe it. And I'm not saying the way the world twists twist it, I'll believe it when I see it. Uh-uh, we, we see it in the word, we get more and more light on it, it births inside of us, and then it manifests. That's the difference between the world's way of doing it, I'll believe it when I see it, or I believe it, therefore I will see it. Totally different, and that's the way we do it. I believe it, then I, therefore I see it. Amen? So he climbs the tree, she fights through the crowd. What happened when Zach climbs this tree? So when, when Jesus, well, let's, let, me, let me read, start back in verse four. So he ran ahead, climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down for today I must stay at your house. So he gets up in this tree and what happened? He could see Jesus clearly. He rose above his crowd. He rose above his circumstance. He rose above his sickness, his illness. And the word of God doesn't tell us exactly what he was dealing with, but he was dealing with something. He rose above it, got above it, climbed that tree and saw Jesus face to face. But here's the awesome glory part. Jesus saw him. Now, Jesus always sees us. God always sees us, but the personal intimate relationship part starts when we're clearly focused on him and he can clearly focus back on us. You know, people in the world think we're nuts as Christians when we say God's speaking to me, but they don't understand why we took a look at that scripture earlier because they're blinded by the God of this world. They don't realize that when we read God's word, he speaks to us. The Holy Spirit on the inside gives us unction, gives us knowing that we know, confirming his word. And you gotta get above and rise above your circumstance to see that. We've got to see him, close, personal, intimate. That's what it is. It's not religion, it's not doctrine, it's personal. It's one-on-one, -on -one, you and the master. And that's how we're gonna overcome everything that's crazy going on in the world today. It's one-on-one. -on -one. So Zach climbs the tree, gets one-on-one -on -one with the master. The master says, I gotta come stay at your house. Now the woman with the issue of blood, a little bit different. So we, we know she heard about Jesus, and then she was gonna go to see Jesus and fight her way through the crowd. So verse 27 in Mark 5, when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if I only may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. So we've got Zach, who's up in a tree, trying to see Jesus one-on-one. -on -one. And we've got the woman with the issue of blood, who sounds like when we read that verse of scripture we just read, she already had faith to be healed. And all she needed to do was get close enough to the master to touch the fringe of her his garment. So I was looking at this, I was looking at this morning, I was doing a little word study on the fringe of his garment. And many Bible scholars believe it wasn't a fringe as we think of it, like a fringe of like a shirt, like my, my shirt here has like a fringe on it, I guess you would call it, or like the lower like hem of the, the shirt. It was actually the tassels on his prayer shawl. And those tassels, and do the, do the research for yourself. I, I tore it apart like four different ways this morning. And the tassels were the representation of the word of God and his authority and God's authority. 
So think about that. This woman knew, she knew that if she got to Jesus, all she had to do was touch that because he was the word made flesh and that he had authority for healing. And she just reached out and grabbed the hole of that fringe. And what, what does it say? Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that the power had gone out of him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? Now think about that for a second. The disciples go on to say, but his disciples said to him, you see the multitude, thousands thronging you, and you say, who touched me? Think about that. There was thousands of people around him, and Jesus goes, no, 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 somebody touched me. Okay, so we're going to stop there on, on the woman with the issue of blood. So we know Zach, uh, Jesus said to Zach, you got to come stay in my house, right? And he made haste and he came down and received Jesus joyfully. But what, verse seven, but when they saw it, they all complained saying, he has gone to be a guest with a, a man who's a sinner. There's so much going on in those two verses of scripture. Well, we know that Zach climbed down out of the tree to allow Jesus to stay in his house. The house to me is a representation of the heart. Basically, Zach was saying, Jesus, come to my heart, come to my house. Let me take care of you inside of me, right? And he received him joyfully. And what else did he do here? He submitted himself. He climbed down out of the tree, humbling himself. Now, if you look at the biblical times tax collector, part of a lot of the attitude you see in these tax collectors was pride and arrogance. And we certainly know that of the ruling Jewish class in the day, the Pharisees and the Sadducees, if you remember the story in the Word of God about the repentant, humble man praying and the Pharisee and the you know, uh, Sadducee guy praying about, oh, thank God I'm not like this guy over here. But Zach said, no, 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 I'm gonna humble myself. I'm coming down from the tree. As we were looking these last couple of weeks about Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Galatians tells us that he became a curse for us because the word of God says, cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree. Jesus himself humbled himself, carried the cross, was crucified for us. This guy was in a tree. Do you see the similarities going on here? And he came down and he humbled himself and said, Jesus, come into my house come into my heart. If you're out there, you don't know Jesus, that's your story, man. That's everybody's story, saints. That's everybody's story. We need to humble ourselves and come down to the master. And you might say, okay, well, what did the woman with the issue of blood did? Well, here's what she did. After the disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see who had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. But did Jesus say, how dare you touch me? How dare you come to me in your time of need? How dare you come to me in your fear, worry over COVID-19, in the economic crash? How dare you? No, what does Jesus say? And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Jesus wants to say that to everybody right now, whether it's sickness, illness, disease in your mortal body that you've been dealing with for some time, whether it's fear, worry. You know, I look at fear and worry as no different than, other, than a sickness or illness. It's something we need healing from. And Jesus is saying right now, if you would believe, your faith has made you well. Go, and be, go in peace and be healed of your affliction. Amen? Now, Zach, we know he said, Jesus, come to my house. Come dine with me. And Zach stood and said to the Lord, look, look, I give half of my goods to the poor and I have taken anything from any, if I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. And Jesus said to him, today salvation has come to this house because he also is a son of Abraham. Remember that if you're out there on the internet, say, I'm a son or daughter of Abraham. 
For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. So we have Zach's story, right? Zach brings salvation to his house. He gives half his goods. What does that represent? He had a hard change. He, ha he came to a reckoning with God, knowing his money wasn't gonna buy what he needed. Now, money's important, don't get me wrong, we have to function. But my question to you out there on the internet is, does money have you or do you have your money? Right? For where your treasure is, there your heart is also. The heart is a follower of your treasure. Are you treasuring Jesus or are you treasuring your finances? Because your finances are not gonna get you through what's going on here. It will sustain you for a certain amount of time, but it's only temporal, right? I don't care right now if you have a zero balance in your checking account and you just lost your job. If you're walking with the Lord Jesus Christ, he will sustain you. It's that simple. We have a story here of Zach with salvation. We have a story he here of the woman with the issue of blood with healing. And what we just read this in verse nine in uh, Luke chapter 19, it says, and Jesus said to him, today is salvation has come to this house because he is also a son of Abraham. Remember I told you guys to say that word for the son of man has come to seek and to save that which is lost. But I'm bringing this back to, and I, I, you guys probably didn't think I was going in this direction, what we've been talking about. And that's Christ redeeming us from the curse of the law, sickness, illness, disease, poverty. And our foundational verse of scripture yesterday and on Wednesday nights, if you can come in online or in person when we're having services on Wednesday nights was Galatians chapter three, verses 13 and 14. And I'm reading this out of the Young's literal translation, which says, Christ did redeem us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us. For it has been written, cursed is everyone who's hanging on a tree, that to the nations the blessing of Abraham might come in Christ Jesus, the, the promise of spirit we may receive through faith. And what's the blessing? We've been talking about that too. Blessed in these shall be all nations, so that those of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. Now, Jesus just told this guy who just got saved, set free from whatever he was dealing with. He said to him, salvation has come to his house because he is also a son of Abraham. If you're Abraham's seed today, which you are, if you're a born again child of God, you have every right to walk in the blessings of God, not the curse. Galatians 3.29 says, and if you are of Christ and of Abraham, you are seed and according to the promise. And we read what the promise was. It was the promise of the blessing. And I wanna close with this today. I know we're, we're going a little bit shorter, but a little different when we're, we're doing it online. I wanna make sure you guys are, are keeping, you know, keeping attentive and you know, I know there's distractions at home. So we wanna make sure you're focused. But what I really realized with these two verses, these two stories, we had Zacchaeus, we had the woman with the issue of blood. Both of this, salvation and healing, were part of God's plan of redemption. It wasn't just one without the other, they go hand in hand. And as I was reading through these, the, the Spirit of the Lord prompted me to go back to Isaiah chapter 53. And what does Isaiah chapter 53 say? And it covers everything that just happened in these two Bible stories. Let's start in verse one. Who has believed our report? And to whom is the arm of the Lord revealed? For he shall grow up before him as a tender plant and as a root out of dry ground. He has no form nor comeliness. And when we shall see him, there is no beauty that we should desire him. He is despised and rejected of men, a man of sorrows and acquainted with grief. And we hid as it were our faces from him. He was despised and we esteemed him not. Surely he has borne our griefs, carried our sorrows, yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities, the chastisement of our peace was upon him, and with his stripes we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray, we have turned every one to his own way, and the Lord had laid on him the iniquity of us all. He was oppressed, he was afflicted, yet he opened not his mouth. 
He is brought as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before his shearers is dumb, so he opened, opened not his mouth. He was taken from prison and from judgment, and who shall declare his generation, for he was cut off out of the land of the living, for the transgression of my people was stricken. And he made his grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death, because he had done no violence, neither was he any neither was any deceit in his mouth. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him who put him to grief. When he shall make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days and the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see of the travail of his soul and shall be satisfied by his knowledge. Shall my righteous servant justify many for he shall bear their iniquities. Therefore, I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong, because he has poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and bare the sin of many, and made intercession with transgressions. That verse of scripture, it, the entire chapter of Isaiah, 5, Isaiah 53, covers what Zacchaeus went through, and covers what the woman with the issue of blood went through. It points to Jesus, everything he did for it. It's the prophet Isaiah prophesied sign about Jesus, what was going to come, that Jesus was going to come, taking everything, redeeming us on the cross, saving us from eternal damnation, and delivering us from sickness, illness, and disease. My friends out there, all I say to you this morning, if you're dealing with the fear of COVID-19, if you're dealing with the financial worry that's going along with that, if you're dealing with a sickness, illness that's been lingering in your body, if you're dealing with financial pressure, the answer's here, it's the word of God. Jesus took all of that to the cross. Man, that's good news, that's the gospel. He took it to the cross on our behalf so that we wouldn't face it. He faced it for us. He became sin who knew no sin, that we might become the righteousness of God in Jesus Christ. Amen. Couple things I wanna go over today, um, remind you of. Uh, tonight, we'll be live streaming our Wednesday service. Not coincidence, I've been dealing, like I said, with Isaiah of um, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law on Wednesday nights. We're gonna continue down the vein of where we left off last Wednesday particularly what we just read in Isaiah chapter 53, that, I, that Jesus opened not his mouth. And Jesus opened not his mouth so that we could open ours. And we're gonna take a look tonight specifically, knowing that Christ is redeeming us from the curse of the law, sickness, illness, disease, poverty, everything that was under the curse. But we're gonna specifically look at tonight, what are you speaking? What are you talking? So I encourage you, 7 p.m. tonight, come out. We're going to live stream, obviously, as well. And just a reminder, if, um, if you like what we're doing here at, the, at Abundant Grace Church, we'd encourage you to sow into our ministry. So we'd love for you to do that. Um, we know that as you guys sow, uh, it's falling on good ground here, and it will produce for you. Um, you know, the Word of God says, as, as the earth remains, seed time and harvest time. So if you want to sow a seed to us, we'd encourage you to do, to, do that. And you can actually text your offering to 732-856-5050. The first time you do it, you're going to be prompted to set up your uh, type of payment and your account. And then after that, you can go ahead and uh, text, or you can visit us not only for giving, but any information you want on the church at www.abundantgracechurch.com. And if you need a you know, you, you need some prayer requests, you have a praise report, we'd love to hear from you too. So we want to direct you to that email, and it's www, um, w, yeah, it's not www, it's AGC at AbundantGraceChurch.com for prayer requests or praise reports. And if you want to just touch base with us on anything, shoot us an email. And that email is agc at AbundantGraceChurch.com. So we love you guys. Um, hope to see you virtually tonight at 7 p.m. And again, tomorrow morning for Healing School at 1030. God bless you guys. Have a great day.